Now I will invite Professor Tiyasina sir, please come. Yes, Professor Tiyasina sir is the man of knowledge and wisdom. और पिछले 25 सालों से अपने ज्ञान के प्रकाश से अंधेरा को मिटा रहे हैं और ही दिलेजेंडरी फिगर इन आवर सिटी सर कर्नलजी ओवर टू पी अस्नेह सर थैंक यू फॉर काइंड वर्ड्स गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरीवन आई मस्ट कंग्रेस्टुलेट डॉक्टर अलोक एंड फॉर दिस फीस्ट एंड आई एम आल्सो प्रिविलेज टू बी हियर बिकॉज़ � he has given me a task of ESC versus ESH hypertension guidelines, key takeaway. When I was searching the literature, there were very few things which I should have, which I can speak. Anyway, so first of all, why hypertension is so important? We have got a simple instrument, we have got, a, but still we have, we are not raised to work conclusive definition when to start the treatment, which patient and how low we should go. And irony is that because of the longevity of the persons, because of the good treatment and health, aging is there and so the incidence and prevalence is increasing. Almost one third of the world population is suffering of more than 50 years uh, of age of hypertension and most important uh, irony is in spite of all this knowledge a simple instrument to diagnose it we are not able to convince the people to take the drug properly or we have got very few patients who are taking and they are under control as per the guidelines this is not only for rural but even the Indian scenario. The urban population, less than 50% are aware, less than 30% are, take, percent are taking the drugs and almost 11 to 15% are take, taking, they are taking the drugs and they are under control as per the guideline. So we have, we as physician has probably failed somewhere. This particular disease has no symptoms practically or 80% of the patient are asymptomatic. Few of them has got the symptoms which may be very vague, headache, easy fatigability, giddiness and they pass it normal. Only 20% present with the dreaded complications and that's why it is labeled as a silent killer. And for this to prevent the silent killing because of the uncontrolled hypertension, we should spread the awareness of the treatment and benefit of the hypertension. It can affect all parts of the body from brain to heart to kidney to eyes and to arteries also. The human cost of uncontrolled hypertension is very high. And the most dreaded complication is the cardiovascular disease, uh, stroke. And if you see the, if one person suffers of the cardio stroke, almost 90% requires some assistance in any form performing the daily activity. For moving around, almost 60% requires some assistance and almost 30 per, uh, more than 60 percent uh, uh, need help for other household activity. So it leaves a lot of sequelae apart from its complication. It can affect the heart also and again because of the increasing age the heart failure patients are increasing because of the hypertension, one of the risk factors. We have got plethora of guidelines to control the arterial hypertension with the 2024, the ESC guideline suggested it should not be called as arterial hypertension, rather we should call it as a elevated hypertension to differentiate it for pulmonary arterial hypertension. Uh, we have, these are the various popular guidelines, Australian guidelines not included here, but I have been given a task to talk about the ESC and ESH. Whatever they are, the initial E is same, European guideline. One stands for the cardiology hypertension, ESC and one is the ESH. 
the four pillars of treatment remain same in both guidelines you have to measure the blood pressure accurately that is one of the most important thing then you have to assess the patient and you have to risk stratify the patient this risk stratification has been added in the recent past then you have to select a therapy depending on the patient profile or you can individualize the treatment then you have to evaluate the response and follow the patient for the proper control of the these four, four pillars are almost similar with little difference both in ESH and ESC guideline the four, first and the foremost is the accurate blood pressure measurement this is the paramount importance has been given in both the guidelines you have to use the office blood pressure me measurement and it should be complemented with the home bp monitoring and ambulatory blood pressure monitoring a measurement of blood pressure office measurement one has to take certain precaution person should be relaxed he should have not taken any caffeine or nicotine he should sit for at least 5 minutes before his his feet must be rested on the floor his back must be rested on the back rest of the chair so there are many precautions you have western countries they are not using mercury sphygmomanometer they are using electronic machine and they suggest take three readings either you take the average or it is cut the first and take the average of the last two readings and the cut off limit is 140 by 90 to diagnose hypertension in the office home blood pressure monitoring is an important it involves the patient in a treatment protocol it also educate and give the awareness for the patient why he should be so serious about the hypertension management and here the definition is 135 by 85 for the diagnosis of hypertension in the then comes the ambulatory blood pressure monitoring 24 hours monitoring uh, at every 20 minute interval it can be useful for depths for mast hypertension for white coat hypertension whether patient is taking the drug properly for the diagnosis of resistant hypertension and here the definitions are different mean blood pressure is 130 by 84 diagnosis more than that day time is 135 by 85 and night time it is 120 by 70 the only difference between the two guidelines is when and how to use the ambulatory and the home blood pressure monitoring uh esc has given that non elevated blood pressure or you can get normal blood pressure in office in home as well as in the abpm 120 and less than 70 then elevated blood pressure is office 120 139 and diastolic is 70 79 the definition differs in the home and the ambulatory blood pressure monitor where it is 120 to 134 and diastolic 70 to 84 in ambulatory blood pressure monitoring and for diagnosis of the hypertension 140 90 is the cut off for the adult then home blood pressure monitoring it should be more than 135 by 85 and similar reading in the daytime in abpm while the in european society of hypertension there is a slight difference is there high normal is 130 to 139 by 85 and 89 this has been labeled as the elevated blood pressure in esc guideline optimal blood pressure has been not mentioned in the esh while it has been mentioned in the esc guideline hypertension is stage 1 2 3 they are similar so esc includes the additional category of optimal as well as elevated bp and high normal in esh is equal into the elevated blood pressure uh, this is for just for definition purpose if you patient a true hypertension 140 by 90 in office 135 85 in data ambulatory blood pressure high office normal at home white coat hypertension 
then mass hypertension normal in office high in home and then both normal in office home and abpm is true normal once you have diagnosed how you are going to screen the patient when you have settled settled for the diag definition a non elevated blood pressure less than 120 by 70 less than 40 years of age follow the patient if there is no other comorbid condition for every 3 years if more than 40 follow it for 1 year then elevated blood pressure if there is asymptomatic no cvd no risk factor follow them for one year while in case of hypertension both diagnosed by the office as well as the abpm or home and if they are associated with high risk case lifestyle modification as well as for the treatment pharmacological treatment this is further highlighted here non elevated bp maintain the bp monitored for 3 years no risk factor elevated blood pressure if it is the new cvd risk or less cvd risk of then you can continue with the lifestyle modification no pharmacological therapy in elevated blood pressure if there is evidence of any risk factor or there is a diabetes or there is a premature coronary artery disease or there is a target organ damage then you have to initiate pharmacological therapy if your lifestyle modification doesn't help much hypertension you have to treat in ehs guidelines they are divided as per the hypermedia hypertension mediated end organ damage if there is end organ damage you have to initiate the pharmacological therapy if no then you have to follow the patient for lifestyle we all know that as the grade increases as the stage increases as the comorbid condition set in the risk as increases so risk stratification is very important to curtail the blood pressure mediated uh, side effects and reduce the cv risk and both the guidelines recommend risk assessment risk assessment is different for both the guidelines in european society hypertension they have simplified it and hypertension mediated organ damage to be evaluated while in case of ESC approach they have given the quantification by score 2 and score 2 old patient uh, uh, for the stratification of the risk risk scoring is quantitative in ESH and it is qualitative in ESH so more flexible approach for the european society of hypertension and more strict approach in case of ESC these are the various risk based approach in patient of hypertension in esc it is the systematic coronary artery risk evaluation of the patient for coronary artery disease and for old patient more than 70 years it is second and they should not have ckd cvd or diabetes then how to evaluate for kidney you have to take egfr albumin creatinine ratio for the heart lvh then uh, end diastolic pressure this is by the ecg echo and various biomarkers biomarkers are not included in esh guidelines then arteries by carotid doppler then eyes definitely you should look for the retinopathy how do you approach if when you risk stratified the patient if the patient is frail more than 85 years of age and there is a high chance of orthostatic hypertension approach should be different start with the monotherapy with caution if the patient is below age of that and then you have to stress test it by the patient and start the treatment however in case of esc they have said high risk ethnicity family history of premature cardiovascular disease socio economic depri- deprivation depression mental state hiv these must be all co- also included apart from that the female gender must also be taken in account in esc where the gestational hypertension gestational diabetes make the hypertensive lady more risky so we are coming to the management approach we all know 
management, lifestyle modification, as well as the uh, drug therapy. In ESH, it is a more flexible, a stepwise approach. While in case of ESC, they have adopted most more intensive and more lower targets to achieve. Uh, this is what had lifestyle 1A indication in both the guidelines, whether it is a daily physical activity, achieving ideal weight, restriction of sodium intake, one teaspoonful in India is necessary, then potassium intake, that is the fruit intake, then limit alcohol intake, and then a spongy physician minimize the noise and the air pollution. Probably Dr. Sandeep Bansal must be knowing the effect of air pollution where he is living. So, one should take care of those environmental factors also, which has been highlighted in ESC only, not in the ESH. Pharmacological therapy, you all know, you start with the combination therapy, ARB, ACE plus CCB, you can have to add one of the uh, thyroid like diet is clothalidone or impermide and then beta blockers as Dr. Sandeep Balsal has high is, has in his, it has got a role it can be used as monotherapy as well as it should be used whenever it is required whether it is a coronary artery disease the congestive heart failure it is for the arrhythmia or to control the heart rate in patient so they have got the compelling indication they cannot be discarded as in 2005 said in the NICE guideline Then monotherapy for the frail patients, I have already told, general consensus, both the, you have to start with the combination therapy, start with the low dose, build up the dose, then add the third, and if two along with the one diuretic, it is not controlled, make a diagnosis of true resistant hypertension, and then you can add different drugs. That was for the ESH, ESC guideline, Beta blocker can be used anytime and then you have to refer the patient either to the hypertensive clinic or use MRA or any other drug such as the alpha blockers. So last is comes the in the ESH guidelines they have added something new apart from the drugs diuretic and you have to establish the true resistant hypertension then you have to use a spinal electron or aprilinone beta blocker, alpha blood blocker, direct vasodilator, renal denervation is coming fast. Then in heart failure you can use RNE or SGLT2, these are new in inclusions and CKLD, then SGL2 and phenarenone. Uh, these are for the frail patients, I have already told, monotherapy one has to use. These are the various new in the heart failure, RNE as well as SGLT2, these are the drugs which are going to be used in future. Then target, the only difference of the target is 140 by 90 and then achieve slowly in ESH. While in ESC guideline they suggest you have to reduce up to the 130-80. If we can come to the 120-80 it's <coughs> good, but don't go below 120-70. And this is the depiction of that 120 to 140 in ESH, then uh, you can reduce in ESC much, diastolic, 80 to 70. So in summary, you have to validate, accurately measure the BP, you define the classification as stratification, then you use the drug judiciously, and the difference is very minor. Probably ESH is for both specialized cardiologists as well as the physician, so they are more flexible. ESC probably more focusing for the cardiologist and specialized hypertensive clinic. They are more stringent in their approach. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Very nicely explained the talk. Now the house is invited for the question and comments. Sir, you have to unmute So uh, I think this was a very uh, nice talk.
and just to uh, reemphasize the two very important things that the the slide that sir is showing that the manometer or this uh, mercury bp instrument is being replaced with an automatic bp recording and uh, if patients are coming to us with an automatic blood pressure recording we should be accepting and encouraging this recording not to rejecting them and another thing is the use of emulated blood pressure which is really very uh, very scared in our in our in our practice that we are very sparsely using this and emulated blood pressure should be used as much as possible especially for those patients who are younger who are newly detected hypertensive patients because that might that might be uh, sympathetic overdrive only that is uh, being reflected as an uh, uh, hypertension uh, more kind of white coat hypertension or for our patients who are not in good control of blood pressure despite of drugs emulated blood pressure can suggest you that uh, is it actual uh, non control of blood pressure or it is a non compliance or there are other issues so this is a comment that i want to make thank you very close that ec has said oh, don't rely only on office bp you have to complement with the home bp as well as the abpm problem in our country is there we don't educate the patient how to measure it properly they should not rely on one single reading because the instruments which are used in, in a western country they take the average of two or three readings secondly the instruments which they have it is neither calibrated cannot be repaired it is only sold in india i am not aware any of the company where you can send for calibration so they must be educated and we should be educated so that more patients are subject to the abpm so there is one thing which is uh, we just came to my mind that uh, Uh, despite all these uh, ESH and uh, ESC guidelines, what I notice in our country, in our kind of setup, lot of young obese uh, youngsters with borderline hypertension. So, what is your take on those people? Do would you recommend that they should be immediately started on antihypertensives? because what i realize that lifestyle changes are not very um, up to the mark like if you compare with european people i'm not talking about american people european youngsters they are like more active they are more exercise friendly but that's a it's a different take on specially indian setup where i see a lot of young people who are not exercise friendly even not very uh, i mean the right kind of food friendly So, would you recommend lifestyle changes or medication at one go? No, no, not a, if the it is stage one, two, or three with a high hypertension mediated target organ damage, or there is a high risk case, then you have you can go with lifestyle and lifestyle you cannot forget whether they are doing it or not. One has to emphasize if in spite of their limitation and whatever they are doing the lifestyle. Three months, you are not, you have not achieved the goal. Then definitely, you there is a limitation. You have to use anti-hypertensive therapy. But you have to wait for three months. You have to wait for three. Yes. We Indians don't walk. It doesn't mean we can't follow the Western literature. Thank you, sir. Now, next hour, I invite Dr. Bhagirath Raghuraman. Now I request uh, Dr. Asis Jaiswal to give momento to Dr. P. R. Sinha sir.